today, we're talking about Eric Benham. That's right, Eric Benham. The black offensive coordinator for the Kansas City Chiefs for the last couple of years. Keep in mind, this young, this young man has two Super Bowl rings with the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, what I'm talking about today is Eric Benham had to leave Kansas City to go to the Washington Commanders to one day become a head coach. That's right. Not go and become a head coach right now. Go and be an offensive coordinator right now. Something is definitely, definitely, definitely wrong with that. And that just irks me. It, it just really gets under my damn skin that a black man in today's world, we are still going through these damn same struggles. It's like he's good, but is he good enough to become a head coach? Well, what about the other white coaches that ain't never coached? A day in their damn life, but they getting head coach job for one. The offensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles, the team that lost the Super Bowl. Well, he just got a head coaching job. Or switching gears over to Frank Reach. Yeah, you know, the same Frank Reach that just got fired for the Indianapolis coach. Well, he's the head coach now of the damn Carolina Panthers. But this man, Eric Benemy, cannot get a damn head coach job, and it's crazy in this world that we living in today. There's already not that many black coaches as it is. And I know we always say it's not about race. Well, it is in this damn case, it is. How much do we have to do? How much do we have to goddamn prove that we're qualified? I get it. Oh man, but he ain't really calling the play. It's Andy Reid. Bullshit. It's bullshit. Stop making up excuses, America. This man deserves a head coaching job just as much as everybody else do. It hurts me as a black man to, to look at this man and have to go through this and go through that and go through this and go through that just to get a head coaching job when the other coaches don't have to go through that. We have to go to the high school, colleges, pros. These damn coaches are just getting an NFL job just like that. And they ain't winning the damn thing. But this man here is winning. That shit has to change. And how can that change? Well, I say let's start hitting the NFL pocket. Let's start, really, really, let's just start not going to the damn games. Until we really can really see change in America. Y'all love us enough to, for us to play for y'all or put us in some position, but when we need to be in the head position because that's where we deserve to be. That's where we should belong, but we don't. We sit around and just say, oh, maybe, I don't know. He done been on eight, nine interviews. Nobody's hired him. Why? Is it that he's not qualified? Or is it because he's black? You tell me. But in my eyes, the whole situation the NFL got going on with that. Trash. Welcome to Trash Talk. I'm your host, Bubba Dub. And today, we have a special comedian in the building. Let's take a look. Oh. How's it going? Why you tell me nigga? Nigga, we out. Nigga, we out. You still have to work, motherfucker. This has no bank account. This is how he transferred money from his savings to his checking. Nigga, offer me everything but money. You want no food? I don't want no food. I want my money. I want to eat money, motherfucker. I want to eat money and shit change. So your company that don't hit wiring, that have destroyed the best restaurant. No, 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 no. Not just restaurant. Give it up, everybody, for my place. <laughs> You got God damn. Now we lit. You see the lights? You got Christmas lights in this see motherfucker. This God Tell damn. Like I, 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 <laughs> electric bill, motherfucker. Mike, man, how you get started in comedy, brother? How? Yeah. Shit, man. 1994, man. Were you even born? You was a sperm when I started. I probably was. Yeah. I was uh I was working at Domino's Pizza. I said, 19 years old. One of my co-workers thought I was funny. He said, Mike, you funny. You know, go go to open mic. So he helped me write my first five minutes and we put it together. I'm like, and I started going to open mic back in 94. That's where it all started. Damn, yeah. 29 years ago, nigga. I think a bug real came out in 94. <laughs> what happened in 94? Let me see. 
Yeah, I, I think, think the Super Bowl was the Chargers against the 49ers. Who went to the finals in 94? I have no problem. I think it was San Diego in the um, 49ers. Yeah, I remember that. Trash that Cowboy one. So, yeah. yeah. I think 49ers you that won that year. Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah, Dion. Dion was over there. Dion Sanders? Dion with the 49ers that year. In 94? In 94. Yeah. Damn. I didn't know. I know the Chargers definitely had... Um, so when you say how old was yeah, over there? out, right? Yeah. Oh. Um, had, that, wanna... had that big running back. Was it Natron Means? Natron Means. Natron yeah, Means. That's right. Yeah. But it's 49ers. Tore their eyes up. It it's like it's like there was. I don't know what the fuck happened that game. I mean, we were rooting for the Chargers. You know, always rooting for the underdogs. But God, they got the ass kicked that day. Speaking of ass kicked. They didn't get the ass kicked, but you feel it. You know, Eagles just yeah. lost. How you feeling about that loss? Terrible, man. That was fixed, man. Fixed? Hey, listen, Vegas tricked. Oh, fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> Vegas tricked everybody. First of all, Eagles should not should not been favored to win that game. They shouldn't be, I know they, what, who they beat? They beat the Giants, and they beat the 49ers without a yeah. quarterback? Yeah. They beat the Giants. Giants stinks. Ooh. And it'd be the 49ers, all the quarterback was had a torn ACL, broken butt cheeks, a missing dick and balls. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have no quarterback. They had nothing. So and that's how we blew everybody out. Correct. Now you playing Mahomes, who's won it before. The nigga is immaculate. He's, he's unstoppable. That's how they tricked us. They made Eagles favorites. So everybody bet their money in the Eagles. Did you bet? Like a bitch ass nigga. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, it's, I'm still heartbroken. I think they should have gave my guys a chance. I, and plus, Mahomes got hurt. I'm like, okay, this nigga is done. This nigga came back like nothing happened to him. They I'm shot like, him up with that shit. Yeah, that fucking, test that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I said the same shit. Test like, this motherfucker right. right. What the hell y'all just gave this nigga? Test him. Text this Puerto Rican looking nigga right now. Text this Puerto Rican looking nigga right there. It's uh, okay. We'll be you back. Know, it's coming again. You know, it's, it's, it's very competitive. Are you are you still in competition with anybody or are you just in competition with yourself? I'm, I'm competition with my fucking outfits, motherfucker. <laughs> we see that. Nah, you ain't in that. Comedy is all about being different, man. You know, I don't mind working with anybody because I think we're all different. I'm different. Correct, I'm different correct. cat wings. Different cat. You know, um, DL, we're all different from each other. So we're not really in competition with each other. Explain man. that you say y'all all different. Explain. Everybody's different. Everybody has their own style. We could all be in one movie and would not sound the same. Like everybody has their own style. And that's what makes you stand out with comedy. You have to be original and different. You know, Chris Tucker, the first one, the hot pitched voice, and boom, he was different. Remember my voice. You remember me about the African nigga? Correct. You know, Kevin Hart is a midget. <laughs> is a, a midget with a perm. He said everybody looks midget. different in their own way, and that's what make that's what make a stand up comedian stand up and stand out from how, everybody else. How, it's funny you said. How did you feel about when um, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock? How did you feel? Oh uh, man, I was pissed because when he slapped Chris Rock, he slapped every comedian. That's how I felt. And you know, and um, Chris Rock handled like a G. Cause you know what I would have did? What you did, man? Call the cops on that nigga. Yeah, damn right. Off the side, that punk bitch nigga slapped me. Fresh Prince of No Air. I don't know that nigga name. He would have slapped me. I would have fell on the floor, motherfucker. Went up to the police shoulder. I said the same. The police like, what do you see? I see a bag of money because I'm about to sue the fuck out this nigga. <laughs> that nigga gonna be so broke, he have to move back with his auntie and uncle in Bel Air, motherfucker. Wow. wow. He going back to Uncle Phil's house. He gonna be roommates with Carlton, motherfucker. Hey. <laughs> That's but, what I would have did. I would the American way. But, but you seen what happened though? That slap, Chris Rock tickets went up like a motherfucker. Hmm? It was thirty dollars ticket, not a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, it did, it did go up. I'm, that's why I'm going to the next Oscar. Grab the mic and curse everybody. Wipe the fuck out. <laughs> Steven Spielberg, your wife a cock eye bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she a lazy bitch with a lazy eye. <laughs> Please slap me, my nigga. <laughs> I need my ticket price to go up. Stop me. For real, though. So, Mike, man, I heard you just, I ain't heard you just open up a school in Ghana. That's but the whole school, man. How did yeah. that come about, Mike? Yeah. Ah, how it came about? I went back home for the first time 20 years ago. And I'm, I've seen things have not changed much. Then I see little kids, 9, 10 years old, walking around, helping their mother sell shit in the marketplace during school hours. And I'm, I never understood. I'm like, why these niggas not in school? Because in America, if your parents are putting in school, your parents want to jail. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like, what? They found out they can't afford to go to school. You can't even afford books or uniform. You sit home. I'm like, I got to do something about this. You know, and I'm like, kind of come back to America and get my money up. I started saving my money. Dope. And, you know, 2019, I went and made it happen. Mm -hmm. And it's finally finished. <laughs> yeah. The school is, is built, 
free for everybody. Free uniform, free lunch, what's up? free That's education. Free. The only thing the kids got to pay for is pay attention, motherfuckers. That's right. <laughs> That's free. That's good shit. Like you just said, we are talking about 1994. You've been in the game that fucking long. How do you manage to stay relevant in this, in this, in this today's society? Trash talk, motherfucker. <laughs> Nah, of course. Uh, of course. No, no, no. You, I, what I did back in the, um, when I started in the 90s, when I did, I know from like 1998 all the way to like 2005 or six, I made sure I was on TV every year. Yeah. And back then, all we had was Common View. So every year, I'm like, I gotta give them Common View. Just keep myself out of it. Make fun of new, because I've been clowning, roasting motherfuckers since the 90s. Yeah. So I just find out who's hot next, and I'll go on Comic View, lay the nigga up, and let people talk about it. Yo, what Michael Blackson said about this person. So it was just being a comedian, just being hardcore, and not, you know, caring about what you say, just speaking your mind. Speaking of that, in today's society, being a comedian, it's kind of like you can't really say the wrong thing these days, or they try to counsel your ass. How you feel about the counsel culture? You know what, man, my, my belief is, man, you know, me personally, I'm never holding my tongue back. But I try my hardest not to insult people. You know, if, if a gay person is not laughing at my joke, I don't feel like I should even, you know what I mean? I want a gay man to laugh. I have plenty of gay jokes I do on stage. Yeah. But I see gay people in the audience and they laugh, so I'm like, okay, they, they're good with it. You know, I mean, there were certain words we did use back in the day, you know, that if we use that shit now, there's yeah, a the problem F-word. with it. Yeah, the F word, yeah. F word, you know what I mean? And hey, I mean, if that's what it is, it's, I, if I gotta keep that word in my mouth, that's fine, but I'm not gonna stop making fun of nobody because certain people feel some type of way. But at the same time, I'm not here to like, Comedy is, is about making you laugh and enjoying yourself, yeah, not yourself. making nobody cry and feel some type of way. Mm-hmm. You know, so as long as that particular person is laughing at what you're saying, it's okay. Yeah. My jokes make all the gay people laugh. So. <laughs> Any gay people here? Right now, I'll make you laugh right now, motherfucker. Right <laughs> so nobody want to claim the gay now. That shit, that's fucked up. Yeah. What about the lesbians? We're in Atlanta, nobody want to say nothing. What about right, the lesbians? Who? The lesbians. But like, you know what? I was, they got mad at me because I told, um, I said, when Brendan Griner get out of jail, I'm gonna be the first one to give him some dick. They got mad at me for saying that. <laughs> I don't get She it. got a coochie, right? Correct, she do. <laughs> but she don't want that, though, Mike. I'll change her life, man. I got the new oh, tumble. Right. I'll change her life, motherfucker. I, I got too much. I make her back to a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say again. Goddamn, motherfucker, you don't get me in trouble. Fuck me. Hey, fuck it. It is what it is. You want a trash talk show, <laughs> goddammit. Yeah, but uh, that's some good shit, though, Mike. But what other comedians? That uh, that you brought up under you, or if, if any, when me brought up, yeah, like up under you, like that you uh, kind of molded a little bit, maybe, or that we don't know about. I mean, I won't, I won't say I molded. One thing I have done, I mean, I've taken some comedians on tour. You know, I've, I've had K Dub out of Atlanta. He went and toured me for a few years. I got another guy from St. Louis, um, uh, McGriff. He he's on tour with me right now. You know, I try to like rotate them every three, four years, give everybody a chance. You know, whenever I do a, a certain, like, you know, back in um, 2005, 2006, I did a movie called Repo I remember with Master P, and I casted the whole movie. I called everybody. You- the only one I didn't cast in that movie was Cat Williams. So Master P called Cat himself on that. But everybody else that was in that movie, from Leslie Jones to motherfucking um, Jamal Dorman to. Who was this in that movie? God, so many comedians. AJ Johnson, all those guys were all R.I.P. came R.I.P. from me. Recipes with AJ Johnson. Man. So yeah, I mean, whenever I'm doing something, I think I got the eye for like, you know, good talent. If I'm doing, if I if I write a script, I'm like, yeah, I think this person will play that person, this person will play this, somebody will play that. I already have that vision in my head, so I'm I'm definitely prepared to do a lot more movies, and I already got in my head who would play, who would be good at what. Oh. You know, but I did I did connect um, DC Young Fly with the agent he's with right now because she was my agent at one time. And when I was leaving her, mm-hmm. you know, I, I recommended DC Young Fly, and he's still with her, making her a lot of money. Shout out to DC Young Fly from ATL doing his thing. So yeah, but at that out just more of a recommendation. He's another kid too that like you know came out of nowhere and and worked hard to get where he is today. Dope. Um, your top five comedian. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Dead or alive, top five. Top five, motherfucker. Hi, right, you know, I got I got to go Eddie Murphy, got to be one. Eddie's one, because, you know, when I was a kid, I came to America, he was the first one I saw. I saw Raw, I saw Delirious, I'm like, damn, this nigga funny as hell. And then, look, 30 years later, I'm working a, working a movie with him, so it even felt even much better. Yeah, yeah. You know, but Eddie's one. And then, you know, when I got to America, I kind of missed out on that Richard Pryor era. So everybody was telling me that Richard Pryor is the real GOAT. So now I started watching Richard's shit. 
You know what I mean? I don't care, damn, Rich is, is good. So I put Rich at number two. Okay. Um, one person that kind of reminded me of myself, you know, he never changed for nobody. And eventually, the industry came to him and accepted him for who he was. Who? That's Bernie Mac. Most definitely. Bernie Most Mac definitely. is Most three on my list. That's yeah. a legend. Yeah. Shout out to Bernie Mac, for real. Uh, let me see. Then I gotta go with kind of like current. Yeah. You know, now I'm gonna go got with two, two current guys. Two left. I got two left. I'm gonna go with two current guys. You know, um, Dave Chappelle. You, you know, he had to, he had to know a guy that just, you know, he was, I don't care what you say, he's gonna be him, he's gonna do his own thing, you know, and he was nothing like a person that could get knocked down and get back up. I mean, he had he turned out $50 million, the third, he was new out of his mind, and eventually came back and Everybody that took money from him, now they want to give back to him. Correct. You know, and on top of that, he's a brilliant comic. You know, and then the fifth person got to be Chris Rock. Chris uh, Rock. Chris Rock, Chris Rock has thrown out some hell of a specials. He thrown out so much. I mean, even prior to like Dave Chappelle doing, Chris Rock was a guy that I used to, every time Chris Rock did a special, it was special. Yeah. Because he, he, he took time to do it. He do special every like six, seven years. Special is nothing you do every year. You know what I mean? And every time he put out a special, I just love his delivery. You know, he's just my, my, my style of comedian. Okay. Uh, yeah, no Kevin. No Kevin. No What's Kevin up with Kevin? No Mike Epps? No Kevin Hart? Ah, no, you said top five. That's a tough. You said top ten, and I'll throw them niggas in there. Top five is tough. Are you the best comedian come out of Philly? Definitely. Ooh. Well, I mean, he's probably, Kev is the most successful Sense. comedian, Same. probably of our era. I mean, I Googled a nigga, I think I have enough money to buy my whole building, <laughs> <laughs> buy my school, buy this studio, buy you. Yeah, you probably could. And make you talk, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's definitely the most successful comedian in our era, mm -hmm. is Kev, you know. Um, but I'm more, he's more mainstream, I'm more underground. Type. And I, no, you okay. mainstream too now, Mike. Don't start trying to oh, down play wow. that shit. You Nigga, if I was mainstream, I would not be here, motherfucker. I'm fucking with you. Underground, bitch. No, no. <laughs> on streets, I'm from the street, nigga. That's my lady told me. You belong to the street. Cause yeah, since you saying you belong to the streets, are you married now? I'm not married. We ain't gay. You ain't gay? Do y'all be swinging? Y'all put. We're swinging. We're not swinging. I'm just a lot of. Side One side chick over. You know what? I'm on. I'm on. You doing better than me. Uh, what you get? I can't get a Mimi Tata. Nothing. <laughs> well, you got to make a certain amount of money. I'm just playing. That's what it is. It's money. You can't be bro. You can't afford your woman. How you going to afford another nigga, mother, another woman, motherfucker? Hey, yeah. man. It is what it is. hard out here these days, man. It's hard to find a faithful it woman is. these days. It is true. I don't know what my lady doing right now. I hope she ain't doing nothing, motherfucker. <laughs> Nah, she ain't fucking around with me, Mike. So how get the... Well, anybody try to fuck it, they're going to fall right in. This is, I'm giving out blood infection every night, motherfucker. Oh, wow. Anybody going there, they're going to fall in. I'm going to have to dig that nigga out and beat the shit out of him. Go ahead. What's next? So, so how get the, uh, the next Friday roll come about? Damn, next Friday. It was right place at the... Well, I wouldn't say right place at the right time. I still had to audition for the movie. But um, back then, this is like 1999. Okay. I was... Uh, I had a job, part-time job for the airlines. I was working for U.S. Airways back then. You know, and I took the job so I could fly free. Cause back then, niggas wasn't trying to fly you around to pay you. So on days off, I'll go to LA, you know, every other week. And I'll go to LA like on a Tuesday, and then be there like Wednesday and come back Thursday and go to work. So Tuesday night they had, uh, Monday night they had, um, Mo Better Mondays, it was like a, it's like nigga night, the improv. Improv is like a comedy club on Melrose. D-Ray was hosting that on Mondays. And then Tuesday they had, they had um, Fat Tuesdays, was hosted by Guy Tory. Guy Tory, Joe Tory, little brother, right. So the, um, Tuesday night was lit. Everybody go there. That means the night you'll go there and see anybody performing. So this one particular night, Ice Cube went to go see Mike S for the first time before he even cast him in the movie, before he auditioned for the movie, he went to go check him out. And that happened to be the night that I happened to come out to L.A. and got on stage, and he's like, okay, that African nigga funny, let him come audition. And next you know, I went audition for the movie. That's awesome, man. That's, that's yeah. right. You've been on fire pretty much ever since that shit, too. Yeah, I mean, things died down. It died down, like, around, like, 2000. I mean, I was lit. I was, like, a hood star back in, like, from 99. 2000 came out. Movie came out 2000. And back then, women had some real cell phones. So, you know, niggas got signing autographs. Niggas, you know, that's what we did. And we go take, oh, so you signed it? You signed it. I remember that. And then, um, you know, shit died down, like, 2005 because, um, you know, I'm not okay. Now I gotta go figure out my next thing to do. 
And I remember I even went back to LA like 2005, and the buzz was done, it was too late. I'm like, fuck it, I'm just go back home, came, went back to Philly. I said, you know, next time I come back to LA, I'm coming for a paycheck. I'm not just come out here, pay rent, and just trying to get put on. And then boom, social media happened, 2009. That's why I, I went to social media and started lighting niggas up, one after another, Instagram, all of that, and then became relevant again. That's dope. And, that's dope. And, and that's funny you say it because a lot of old comedians, they don't really want to jump on social media. They never media. did, man. Trust me, I could have easily missed out on that if I didn't jump on the right time. Now, you know, I mean, don't get it wrong, there's a few comedians that didn't jump on, jump on, that are still relevant in the comedy world. You know what I mean? Like, Bruce Bruce ain't got no million followers. Or Bruce Bruce, just his name. Dope. He could still work. You know what I mean? On SJ. You know, uh, Ricky Smiley had the radio because he wasn't really big on the social media, but he had the radio as well. And Ricky Smiley was able to grow his social media because of his radio. He's, you know, he found a way to like, but a lot of those guys, certain guys didn't, probably felt like they didn't have to do it. You know, but in the new era we're in, man, that's all producers care about. Yeah. You know, because nowadays there's so many contests, so many shits to watch. How you gonna figure out who gonna watch your shit? So now you need your own fucking audience. Correct. You know, if you go up there, I got five million followers, and these are real followers. They're like, okay, we'll give you a show because we know if fucking one percent of them niggas watch it, there's something. There's something. Correct. Bingo. So when we gonna get the Michael Black and special? When we, we gonna just, get? We just talking about it, man. So um, I can't talk too much about. You know, I got a I got a potential show in, coming up soon. Okay. My own show. Uh, and then the same producers want to produce my stand-up, and we talk about shooting the shit in Ghana, like doing something real different. Big shit. Big shit, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's going to come out. All that's, all that's going to happen this year. Oh, let's give it up for that, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> give it up for that. That shit is dope. Uh, what's your basketball team? Who you, who you rocking with? I mean, if you know, I was raised in Philly. I'm Philly everything, Y'all going to win this year? Huh? Y'all going to win this year? Oh, God, it's tough. You know the funny thing about Philadelphia? Them niggas, we went to every championship game in every sport and lost them all. <laughs> Baseball, <laughs> soccer, football. Trash. I'm hoping yeah, trash. basketball is not fucking next, man. Yeah, trash. Basketball, we're not expecting. I don't expect them to win. Well, y'all do got Y'all got him big over there. If he stay healthy, then y'all maybe got a I chance. I mean, he's got a chance. We st he still has healthy and then Ala Dupo and that, that other ni Nigerian nightmare nigga. We need him to be hurt. What about Harden? I'm, I'm talking about the other team. I'm He's talking trashed. About they trashed him. <laughs> who, who in your family was a shit talker? Because you you one of the biggest shit talkers I know. Who in your family? Oh, you my whole family shit talkers, man. My, I got a sister. She a fucking savage. Yeah. <laughs> my sister's a savage. Her son is the one that plays. Her son plays in the NFL. Okay. And yeah, he talks shit. So it's, it's not my, I think I got it from my mom. My mom, 80 years old. She's still talking shit. So yeah, I found out later on I got all this shit from my mother. That's dope. That's some dope shit. Yeah. Um, how is it being a father and being on the road all the time? How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you yeah. manage that? I mean, it's, 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 it's not what, we, what I wanted, but you know, that's what, that's what comes with the job, you know? And eventually, like, um, like my, my youngest are twin boys. They're 16, they'll be 16 in a couple of weeks. Okay. You know, and I don't get to spend much time with them. They live in a whole different state. You know, and I'm somewhere else, so, you know, I'll fly there maybe once a month, see them, or if they're not playing basketball, doing something, they'll meet me on the road and come do a show. So we got our own little, little bond, you know. Oh. And uh, I think we'll spend more quality time when they're done high school, you know, because wherever they're going to go to college, I said to myself, I'm going to go get a house. Wherever they're going to go to college, I'm going to go much closer and spend more time with them. That's so that, that's just two years away. That's dope. Um, that's dope. If you wasn't a comedian, what else would you be doing? Shit, man. You know, Africans will always want to be an accountant, man. I try to be, we got to count that money, motherfucker. I guess, man, so you must be. But yeah, I was, gonna be, I was gonna be doing, I was, you know, the thing about success, man, you know, you can be successful in almost anything you put your mind to. You know, because prior to me taking on comedy, like I told you, I worked at Domino's Pizza. I started off answering the phones back in whatever year it was, 90 whatever, answering the phone, making $5 an hour. Started delivering pizzas on a bike, making like $25 a day in tip. Went to like being assistant manager, went to being a manager. If I wasn't pursuing comedy, I would have right now probably owned me like five, six Domino's Pizza and still make millions of dollars. Correct. So you could be successful at anything, you know. Um, and coming from Africa, man, we I didn't expect any of that. I just I would go to just to come out here and like 
eat good food every day and they just go to school, get an education, get a job, send a little money home, help your family out. So all that is that I'm, that I'm getting right now is like way above what I expected. How often do you go back? Oh uh, man, since I built this, I go, since I built the school every other month, I'm That's going back in, like in a week from today, I'm going back. Are you rich as hell? Well, I got to be rich. Super it's rich. You go to Africa, man. Shit, it's going to take me 10 months to save up and go to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, nigga, go to fucking uh, College Park. That's Africa. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else you got going on you want to talk about, Mike? That, that, you, that you can talk about. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. So, you know. Um, I mean, besides building a school, I want to start, like I was telling you how I have the eye and the knowledge of talent, you know, so I want to like, kind of like start a management company, you know, you know, I'm a, I'm a big music fan, especially I'm a big Afrobeat fan. So I'm starting, um, a management company to manage musicians, comedians, actors. So that's in the early process of it. You know, I, I got my first artist, an Afrobeat guy from Ghana named Gambo. Look out for Gambo, he's about to blow up. Yeah. And then like I said, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna grab me a couple more little hip hop artists. And eventually I'm gonna have blacks in management. Whoa, sounds good. Up. Can you do, can you like tap dance? No, I don't do no tap dance. I do what you do on the stage. <laughs> uh, you you comedian, like, you tell jokes. Yeah. Most definitely. Okay. Most yes, definitely. That nigga, real talk. All right. Well, well, we just want to thank you for stopping by Trash Talk, Michael Blast. It's been a blast with you, man. Man, this was it's easy, been... man. I'm thinking about it being... No, I'm not here on Trash Talk. Oh, okay. No, I'm not. They're going to talk trash about me when I leave? No, no. no trash no. my outfit when I leave? No, no, no. <laughs> no got, got Christmas lights in. I can't talk about it now. That surprised me on that. I want everybody to give up for Michael Blast, though. Yeah! Trash! 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 Thank you, bro. Trash! Did y'all enjoy Michael Blacks in the woods? Yeah. 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 That boy say he better than Kevin Hart. Oh my gosh. That them, 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 funny. them big shoes to feel. The jacket. That shit was an ostrich. <laughs> a goddamn ostrich sitting on it. I'm for real though. Yo, but he kept it real and stuff, and he came to talk that trash. He did come to talk that trash. So give it up for Michael Blacks for that. Yeah. 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 And for you who watch this show, if you want to come and be a part of the live audience here at Trash Talk, there's some things below or maybe there's some things above. Hit the email and we will make it happen. If not, y'all trash, 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 trash. You know, I was in that context of that situation. It was like I wasn't, I didn't want to go on a date and I didn't want to, it wasn't a lot of conversation to be had. It was just like, let's get to it. Yeah. Like, you know what it is. I'm drama, bitch. Like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I, w I didn't say that to her, but you know. In your mind, yeah. Most yeah. no, definitely. <laughs> <laughs>